I want to go back to the the very very beginnings, okay? The very very beginnings of this track. So a lot of people ask me how I start my music, um, and the answer is there's no answer. Um, it all depends. I would there are definitely more popular ways that I start a song that I start writing a song than others. Um. Sometimes it's because I was fiddling around on the keyboard and I found something crazy. Um, you know, most of my ballads, for instance, are written on the piano. Um, but probably 80, 75 to 80% of the time, um, my songs are written from an idea I hear in my head and I just sing it out into the phone. Um, and then I just take it from there. Like I pretty much, I'll sing into the phone. I may even hear most of the parts at that point. And so I'll sing out different parts that I'm hearing that should be in the song. Um, put it, in, sing it into the phone, all the parts. And then I just, whenever I'm ready uh, at home, I'll just pretty much start dialing in everything the way that I'm hearing it in my, in my head. So more, probably the most likely thing in terms of how I start my music is, or how I start writing a song is hearing something in my head and just starting to sing it out. Um, and then going and and translating that, um, in logic. So that said, I actually want to, the first thing I want to play is actually the voice memo that I found. I was actually really glad I was able to find it. The voice memo of um of the track so basically the first thing i hear this thing in my head and i think i remember this was like back in probably october or no it was like november of 2017 heard this idea in my head um in fact i should probably back up even a little bit further basically um my sister emma rose emma rose had a big party big 16th birthday party this was back in 2017 and my buddy Chase Akers who play guitar on the track um he is he's kind of a DJ by day and a producer by night so he um he was hired actually to DJ her her party so they had it at a clubhouse and everything he DJed it and you know I was I was sitting there while everybody's like screwing around partying and whatnot um, and he's playing these songs, and they all really bounce, man. They're all really bopping tracks, right? You've got stuff like No by Megan Trainor. You've got like Focus on Me by Ariana Grande, et cetera, et cetera. Really, really strong tracks for, for a club. And that was kind of the moment that I sat there. I was like, dang, man, I need a track that is going to um, bop in the club. I need something that the DJ is going to be like, oh, yeah. I need this in my playlist. Um, so I was like, I was like, okay, I need a track that's like no or or um, like focus or or something, which are all I I love those tracks by the way. Those are great tracks. Um, and um, but I was like, okay, but I want to get even more funky with it. Like no is a really cool track. I want to take it a further of I want to take it further. I want to be able to do a little bit more with it. So, um whoa, wow, that's some hate for Megan Trainer. Dang. Listen, man, she can be white, but um she can be white, but no is a freaking bop. Um no is great. Um what's that? Other? She's got another song, uh Watch Me Do, which is the first track on that album. Great track. Great track. Um, uh, anyway, um, I'm not late, am I? You're a little late, but you're not too late. Um, basically I've just been talking about the background of the track, uh, how it got, how it got started. Um, so yeah, listen, I heard like stuff like Megan Trainor being played. I heard stuff like Ariana Grande, you know, and then also your other classic tracks, stuff like freaking yeah by Usher, God tier track. Thank God for Yeah by Usher. That whole um, uh, Confessions album is just beautiful. So um, anyway, rabbit trailing. 
great tracks and i was like i need something that a dj is gonna like want to listen to and be like dude i need this in my playlist this has got to bop at the club right okay so that's how the track kind of that was my initial idea so a couple days later i remember sitting in the car and i started hearing something that was kind of kind of had a little bit of that similar idea as like no in terms of kind of a, a driving bass line and maybe like a really bright piano anyway talking a lot like i said a lot of the stuff that i come up with in terms of writing i start by hearing it in my head singing it into voice memo so i'm gonna go ahead and actually play you the voice memo of um literally the very beginnings of this track what what got it all started and i actually called the the thing when i finished recording i called it ariana grande-esque dj track oh, that's kind of what i'm wanting it's like kind of like so all right i got this new idea kind of has like a like a oh gosh like a dj vibe to it like something a dj would play you know that's kind of what i'm wanting it's like kind of like an anthem something like ariana grande would do you know so you got your 808s in there and stuff but it's like so it's a little bit different yeah so so my initial Right. right, and the drums would go with it, so I'd be like, right. So now I'm singing out all the different right. instruments, excuse me, like that, and then right, right. So then you'd have like a. So this is all. Uh, I want to remind everybody this all this recording is from like November of 2017. Melody over that, so it's like. A completely different melody. Completely different verse melody. Like I'm trying to. And that's inter it's interesting that I sang in that. Da -da 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 because it's actually deep in the track. I'll, I'll show it to you guys later. Uh, you may not hear, but it, th there is actually a thing that does that. Ba -da 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 -da. Uh, like I'm trying to figure out like you could go like so, so what's going on right now is a lot of this becomes improvised so as I'm singing I'm coming up with new stuff so I'm just kind of singing it and just feeling it out until I hear something else. So that's what you're hearing. This happens so, almost uh, all the time know. with I'll my tracks. I'll figure it out, but probably some, uh, something along those lines. And then, like, the pre-chorus would go, like... So it's a little similar. It's a little similar to the... This is, like, verse B. That's pretty similar to like I'm still trying to figure out the chorus too, but it'd probably be like something like and harmonize on like that last part so. yeah so the chorus completely changed um the chorus was uh, i don't think anything about the original chorus idea stuck. yeah this is nothing like what we ended up with and then maybe like some that's kind of similar it's very it's very that's that's a trope of mine you you'll catch that a lot with my courses as i may have like something but then it'll end with like this kind of stepping up idea a lot of people have cited scream um scream is without a doubt the most inspirational and influential piece of music um in terms of production for me ever period Scream by Michael Jackson is the song that made me decide I want to get into music. Um, it's not that I wasn't doing music before that, but Scream by Michael Jackson was literally the... I remember the day I sat down and listened to that on a CD player with my old Walkman CD player with my headphones on. I remember hearing that. And that was the first... 
like I already liked music. I was super into cartooning and like animation at the time. I'm kind of rabbit trailing here, but that's that song when I first heard that, it blew my mind what they were doing in that song. It was like when when we talk about experiences, that was an experience. Uh and I just remember hearing that in subconsciously that was like the moment that I was like, okay, I adore music. Um, so yeah, the, anybody who cites scream as, as, or this song as sounding similar to scream, that's why hook, you know, you know, kind of the same way Ariana Grande is like, I don't know, focus on me or like, uh, uh, whatever the one is where the dude's whispering, <laughs> I can't remember it at the moment. Um, but you know, that, that kind of, um, uh, one less problem without you. That's that's what that man. Hey, I rem good thinking, Garrett. Oh, good uh, memory. Uh, I I'm trying to think in my head. Though. Is it weird that your music influenced me to get into music? No. No, not at all. I'm I'm honored. No, that's 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 how life goes, man. People inspire people. I w I would hope that I inspired people to the to try one, new things one or, less problem or without you or whatever. Kind so of like I'm that honored. Kind of thing. It's not weird at all. I don't Sonal Smash is an inspiration for a lot of my music. Man, I'm really honored by that. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so there is the voice memo. That is how the track got started. That is its humble beginnings. Um, from there, it literally just became start working on it in Logic. Um, so actually, I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the... Uh, I'm going to pull up the... Old, so here you go. So can you see these? These are all these are all the work in progresses and versions. Okay. Went through a lot. Okay. So here's actually the very first uh, work in progress. You're not going to be able to hear it through here. So we'll go ahead and throw it into iTunes. This is the absolute first work in progress. Uh, so what what's it dated? November tenth, twenty seventeen. November 10th, 2017. Here we go. So, the, pretty much that beat. The way I the way I played it in is what you ended up with. Now you can hear it's a lot more naked. Yeah, you can hear it's quite a bit more naked. It's obviously not mixed. Um, but the bass idea and pretty much the entire groove that I laid down is exactly what went out the door uh, a week ago. Um, so, so again, you know, it's like I heard something in my head and that's what I wanted. And so while a lot of things were changed, you know, the, also the bass concept stayed exactly the same. Yeah, <laughs> and that stayed in the final track. You just can't hear it as much. So I'm literally just going to go through. This is work in progress, too. Oh, yeah. So, okay. So I implement this is a f funny story. Well, it's not really a story, but I implemented in a, um, a sound of a car horn and I really liked it. But I actually remember playing the track back in my car and hearing that and actually freaking out a bit. And I was like, okay, we can't keep that. I, I don't want to freak out anybody in the car. Um, I use like a car horn as like a, 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 a kind of an instrument, a sample that's got a rhythmic and it, it had a cool element to it. But like, I was like, all right, I can't be getting anybody in trouble because they confuse my song with an actual car horn when they're driving. So... And it's awesome, but I, I decided not to keep it for that reason alone. Okay, so pretty quickly here, I had implemented in verse B. What date is this? Literally the next day.
Yeah. So I get in the verse B. Um, so let's listen. This is kind of almost as much an experience for me because I haven't listened back to these in a while. I don't know. Okay, interesting. Here's here's the chorus. The f it's similar, but there's something in particular that that I'll note. It's some things you probably have already noticed. And then this is pretty much the same. Like, I mean, again, I added stuff. I there's there were new things in, added. There were some things changed. It was mixed. But you know, it's essentially it's got the bass idea there. So that freaking horn thing. So let me let me make a comment about the chorus. All right, peace out, Eddie. Um, let me make a comment about the chorus. So, the one thing you can already notice is that that high little like piano thing, the Alicia Keys thing, I call it. Um, the the that high piano thing that I was doing, not there. The other big thing, and I don't know which work in progress is it was when I finally changed this. Um, but. That's a minor key. Now, this is what I'm gonna start getting into a little bit of more music theory kind of stuff. So if you're not musical, this may not matter to you at all. Um, however, I feel like this was very, very important. The original chorus that I wrote here was minor the whole way. So if I come over to my keyboard here, basically, I just played a minor seven, right? So that's an F minor seven. Um, so that's all well and good, but here's, here's the thing is that didn't have nearly as much, um, I don't know how to put this. It wasn't as interesting. Um, I've got, I don't, I don't really know a better way to put it. It wasn't as interesting. So eventually I changed the, um, the chord progression a little bit where what you're hearing in, in this work in progress the bass idea stayed the same, but I actually changed the the chords. So it went instead of going insane, instead of doing that, I changed it a little bit. I went like this. Driving me insane. Na, na, na. So what I'm doing there is instead of it sitting on a on a minor chord, um, it's actually going from a major seven to a minor seven to then a two over one. Mm. Right, and then you spend your life trying to bring everyone else down. Wait a minute. And then I don't actually remember exactly what chord I did there, but it's essentially that. So yeah, that between not having the, uh, but between not having that and also the chord change, those are the biggest changes to that chorus. Uh, let's move on. You're already hearing the mix kind of getting a little better. I'm already adjusting a bit more. Chorus is still the same. Yeah. Same deal, got all the way to the bridge area. The bridge was one of the last minute changes of this song. Um, there wasn't really a bridge, there was a bridge but it was not, um, it's not what you heard at all. 
uh, which is similar to Open Your Eyes, uh, which had a very different bridge uh, than what is on the final product, which was a last minute move. Uh, the, 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 the bridge that you guys hear on Open Your Eyes was changed in literally like the last two or three weeks. Um, Anderson Pack and Car soundtrack on the side, you see cars. What are you, car soundtracks? I don't know what that actually is at all. I have absolutely no clue. Some of these playlists are literally like 12 years old and there's nothing in them. There's nothing in this. <laughs> there's not, it was just transferred from my other computer, but there's no music in it. I'm telling you, like some of these playlists are literally 12 years old. What's the voice recording from in the song, by the way? What voice recording? Okay, when you actually play the complete song, I'm gonna head to Discord and sing the song in general. <laughs> okay. You playing on electric guitar for the bridge? You know, that's a good question. It's possible I did at one point and then didn't. Uh, it's possible I said something about the song that maybe you guys knew about, but I don't recall that. Oh yeah, so I implemented in some guitar samples here, some funk guitar stuff. And that actually was not totally, it was it was held on to, but not entirely. And I had, again, Chase Akers come over and play guitar for real. Ah, that's right. So, this is going to be interesting for you guys. Um, I actually initially wrote this to have um, Youngtown do a rap breakdown on it. Um, this was, I wanted him to do a rap breakdown, at, breakdown on it at a time in which he was actually creatively not totally um, there. I, I don't, I don't want to sound, I don't want to sound like. I, he he definitely spoke about it publicly, but he was kind of, I, I suppose you could say he was kind of in a creative depression at the time. Uh, he didn't really know what he wanted to do. Um, and so it was kind of just a bad time for him. So I brought it to him. He really liked the track, but couldn't really come up with anything. Um, and that's okay, because ultimately I think the song was really strong without a rap breakdown. I really heard a rap breakdown simply because um, that was very that was very um, popular to do that kind of thing, and and it would have worked great on this track. Um, but you know, and I and I'm not saying like I still think it would have been freaking dope if Luke was on this. I think he would have killed it uh, if he was in the right mindset. Uh, but he just he he wasn't able to really come up with anything. And that's fine, you know, some, sometimes stuff just doesn't work out. Um, and, uh, and he just, for the record, he just released a single not too long ago. If you guys have not heard it, please, please go check it out. It is so good. Um, let's continue. Yeah. So this would have been, this was what I wrote for a rap breakdown. Uh, I think during the bridge there's a voice recording. Isn't it for the old war footage in the lyric video? Uh, I'm so sorry, Joe. I'm totally... I, I, I have absolutely no clue what you're talking about. Gonna head off now. All right. Merry Christmas, man. Have a good night. <laughs> Rap breakdowns have some kind of cliche in pop music, though. Uh, they are used a lot, yeah. Um, okay, so... <laughs> Work in Progress 6 is when I guess I finally decided the name of the track is Get Along. Ah, so here's the original, like, bridge, I guess. Maybe it was supposed to be a solo. I have no clue. This is the original bridge. Yeah, so that's the original bridge. Um, it was way too much. There's no way we could sing anything over that. Uh, that bridge was kind of the one thing that most certainly didn't really have a vision behind it. So, um, yeah. 
Um, we there were no vocals for it. Got to like probably two to three weeks before the track was done, maybe like a month, and I was like, "This isn't gonna work. We've got it. We've got to flip this. This has got to be totally changed." So I completely overhauled, totally redid the bridge, and that's what you guys end up hearing is kind of a more rock oriented bridge. Um, that most cer- certainly has vocals on, on it. I feel like it turned out pretty pretty well. So um, just some yells back and forth here. Okay, now. so n- this is when I start recording. So what I do a lot of the times I record like demo vocals, right? Scratch vocals, explaining either I'm singing out the melody idea or I'm singing out literally the whole vocals, but it's not to record it for real. It's simply so that I have it in place so I can work around it. So I know what I'm working with. Or it's for other people so they understand what I'm working with. Uh, or it's to remind myself of certain ideas. Um, so probably just some yells back. So these are literally notes I'm getting myself. Kind of fun stuff. This is the beginning of the album, so just get him hyped up. You know? So I already kind of had the, the lyrics and vocals here. As you can see, the, the rhythm is different. I meant the part where people are talking the background towards the end of the song. Are you talking about when they're fighting? Are you talking about the part where they're fighting the breakdown? What with this, like the, 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 as, as me and my buddies have been calling it the me, uh, the, the me, uh, channel string quartet. Yeah. Okay. We recorded those. Um, that was literally, I'll, I'll get to that. I'll, I'll, again, all of this, I'll explain all of this. Um, but we recorded all those. So that's literally me, um, Emma Rose, and Jordan, Jordan uh, I, I don't know how to say his last name. I'm so sorry. Uh, Etienne, Etienne, um, doing um, just a whole bunch of different stacks of us just like arguing. Um, and that's what it is. It's just a whole bunch of stacks of us arguing. Um, and doing like kind of different voices. That's all it is. And I'll get to that in a bit. Cause there's some funny, you'll hear some funny things in there that you would never hear with all of it jumbled together. Um, so here is, here is the scratch vocal. This is interesting because the rhythm is a little bit different, but the lyrics and the general idea is pretty much there. When was this? Okay. This was March of 2018. So this is about half a year later. It's a, it's a lot, it's a lot more robotic, I think, you know? That's pretty close. So I'm singing on this part right now. So it's pretty much just a crappy scratch vocal explaining the idea of how it went. Pretty much all lyrics seem to almost be in here at this point. Okay, so it sounds like this is the first time that the course was changing. It was probably because I wanted to work it, it vocally in a way that would be a lot more interesting. Was Emma always supposed to be in this song? Uh, yes, I pretty much planned on her being in this song from, from the get-go. Um, I pretty much wrote this around Emma being in the song. Yeah, so pretty much the whole vocal idea was there. Now it is different. I, I had nothing here. Um, like more. Oh, so hold on. Here's here's some notes for that breakdown that I finally implemented. So probably like some fight sounds here, like people kind of rising up in anger, um, like more of it as it goes. Maybe it's even some newsreel stuff. Thing people reporting bad things. Oh yeah, I was thinking about using newsreel stuff. That didn't happen. More coming along, it's getting louder. It's getting louder. Louder, louder. I say something right here. And then. Yeah, so you can hear there's a little bit of changes made. Now. Okay. 
Okay, good. So here's something interesting. I got really into it uh, with the scratch vocal. Again, the vocal that's just supposed to be there as a placeholder. Um, that actually, but I got so into it, and I actually just managed to get a great take singing it. That the uh, the the ad libs that I do at the end, particularly the that sound, all of that is actually the scratch vocal. That's the original, just one take vocal that I did on it. Um, I I was actually I I got so into it, played it back. I was like, dang. And I kept it all the way till the till the end. So that whole part that you hear the that sound, that's a much older scratch vocal. I can give you hit, that sound, that sound. That's the that's what ended up on the final track. That did not stay. <laughs> that stayed. So then at some point here, I don't know when, I sent the track to Jordan, who did brass and some extra backing vocal embellishments on it. Dude is a genius. I think that's, okay, so this looks like it's just the same thing, but no vocals. Not here. Sorry, I'm trying to find it. Let me let me just play it in here. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, so work in progress nine. What when is this? May of 2018. So pretty much right after I release What If I'm Hurt Again, and I'm trying to get this out of the way. Uh, yeah. So he already. I was like, I told him, I was like, listen, throw in some vocal, like just random crap, and I'll throw it around. And it's in the final track, you can hear it. That's all Jordan. Some of his stuff got cut, uh, or it was moved, uh, simply because of arrangement deals. You know, I had to keep space for stuff, don't want it getting cluttered. Make this than it needs to be. But dude's brilliant. Dude's a genius. If I hadn't added a million things, I think that would have stayed. I had to do edits on it because I couldn't get him to do any any re redubs on anything But he actually did a whole thing over that bridge that made it a lot cooler Which made me want to keep it but eventually like I said vocally I couldn't find anything for it So it, I just couldn't feel it out Yeah, so he did a great job really making it snazzy. It just didn't end up feeling right in the final product, but it still sounds solid. It still sounds great. So you can already hear he his only his. We didn't do our, Emma and I didn't do our fight recordings yet. Our fight stacks. You're lucky your voice never broke. Um, that is not true. It did. I had to completely relearn how to sing. That is the sucky part of being a dude. Uh, when you're a girl and you learn how to sing when you're like seven, you're, you're pretty, you're, you're good to go. Uh, if you learn how to get really good at singing before puberty, have fun, dude. It's going to take a while for you to refigure out how to do it. Uh, cause yeah, it totally changes. It changes dramatically. I still personally believe that my voice was better before I hit puberty, but I've just managed to learn how to work with it as it is now. Not to mention, though, I've learned how to, I, I can get a lot more grit out of my voice now, which I couldn't as a little kid, um, which I do like. Um,
Okay, so again, Jordan pretty much came in. He sent me stuff after I sent him a Travis, like, hey, you want to work on this? Yes, absolutely. Let me get something back to you. May comes around, May of 2018. Bam, there it was. That's what you just heard. Yeah, so you can hear Jordan there doing his takes, fighting takes. It's just like two or three takes, and then we stacked on top of that. And I'll show you guys that in a bit. Um, okay, so then Emma came in and did her voice. Why you just compromise? Why you gotta be so yeah, pretty much ended up saying the same. It's just not mixed here. And this is dated March of 2019. So this was, uh, I guess, nine months ago, something like that. Uh, kind of showed up a minute ago. Who's Jordan? Uh, the the brass guy, the dude that did the backing vocals and stuff. Um, that is uh Jordan. Uh, or as he's gone in in different at at different points. Sir J is another one that he's gone by. Uh, he's gone by numerous different Sir Jordanius, Jordan Jordanius, whatever it is. He's gone by different. Um. Yeah, so with Edge of the Universe, I was still pretty much trying to sing the same way as when I was, like, young. Because my I had hit puberty, like, about two-ish years before that. Uh, like, one or two years before that. Um, and, um, yeah. So I, I sang very differently for Edge. And then I sang very differently for Beat Demon. I was, tr I was kind of experimenting with how I sang... In the long run, I'm not a fan of how I sound on, on the Beat Demon record, but at that point, I was just trying to figure things out. I was trying different things. So, uh, yeah, okay. So, yes, for anybody who's not aware, Sir J is on this song, um, and he did the brass and those other backing vocals that you may hear that you're like, that doesn't sound like Garrett or Emma. Okay, so that's pretty much the beginnings and the progress of working on the track it then just it got mixed sent it to professional mastering engineer to master shout out to john mayfield and then here we go we have the final track so now i'm gonna actually play back or i'm not really gonna play back there's no way this whole thing is gonna play back but i'll go ahead here's the headache that is get along the the logic profile so um i don't even know where to start i guess we'll start with the beat here now, I think if I, for whatever reason, if I mute it, or excuse me, if I solo, it, it's, I, I don't understand. So we'll do it this way. Um, so as you guys probably heard, um, as you guys probably heard, um, the, um, pretty much the entire drum loop, the whole drum groove that you hear, um, it's been there the whole time. That was one of the first things I laid down and it very, very, not much change happened to it. Um, so I, this whole, look, the beat takes up a lot. Now you'll see all of these, all of these uh, tracks with like these arrows that break down into like, there's a lot of tracks here. There's a lot of groups, a lot of things that are all kind of bunched together. Uh, but the beat has got to be one of the giantest ones. Look at this that we just opened up a, a giant monster here. So um, this is, I'll just go ahead and start adding on tracks and as I play. So just pray to God that, in fact, I might, let's minimize that, see if that helps me out at all. So here's your, here's your kick. Kind of more of a stereo kick, right? Hat one. Rim shot. And this is pretty much how I built it, you know? It's just hearing stuff, trying different things, and you just end up with something. Got a little bit of a tom in the left ear there.
808 hat, something that's doing something a little bit faster. <laughs> if you hear any crackling, it's because my CPU is having a heyday right now. Uh, in other words, it is choking, it is trying to breathe, and it can't. Shaker. I think I may have recorded the shaker myself. Yeah, I did. That's my own shaker. Right? Okay. Snap. Snap L. Snap left. Snap right. A little clap sample. See, now, now we got a groove going. But there's still more. So I may have sung, I may have done this before or after. I do a lot of beatboxing just to get the idea out. Sometimes it ends up staying. In this case, it did. It's pretty subtle in the mix. Pretty freaking subtle in the mix. So here's another. Then that all ended up in the final thing. So all of this, all of this. Uh, in fact, all of that too. We'll get to that in a second, right? So this is what we got so far. Now you may hear now. That's literally, I think it's literally, I recorded like a can. Like I grabbed like a can, like an aluminum can or something. That's what that is. Um, I, yeah, I, st I record a lot of different stuff. Yeah, so that's like a can of some sort. I'm hitting it. And then I recorded my lap. Literally just... That's all that is. It's just two, two, two stacks of that uh, left ear and right ear. And then I even literally recorded my desk. Uh, you'll hear, you hear it in fills and stuff. I mic'd my desk and then just hit it. That's all that, so all of it together. that is is like that's a little just drum fill sample and then I added in a snare sample there you hear peace out manicorn So that's, that's pretty much, and you know, if I were to show you, I guess I can go ahead and show you these, the samples. It's a little snare. That's your main snare you're hearing. And then I've got my, my cymbals. Files like this show how difficult and tedious it is to make music like this. It wasn't tedious though. I think the most tedious part was mixing. Um, but really what it is to me is I'm hearing a whole bunch of ideas and I just go bam, 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 bam. I throw them all in and then, and then pretty much at that point, it's just a matter of, okay, what needs to stay? What needs to be taken out? Let's change some stuff so that we're making sure nothing's getting too ridiculous. But it's pretty much a whole bunch of my ADD just going bam, 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 bam. That sounds cool. Let's try that. How about we mic this? You know, that's pretty much, that's what I'm doing. So um, it's very, it's actually creatively, it is so much fun uh, because I'm able to just throw a whole bunch of crap at the, at the computer and just see what sticks. Um, but it's actually not, the most tedious part is certainly mixing. Uh, mixing this was a job. Uh, it was not that was the least fun part uh but i was determined to get a really good mix out of this um so i worked 
I worked my butt off to get a really good mix out of this. So I, I spent a very long time on the mix. Uh, you'll see uh, in terms of mixing, uh, that with um, the beats, uh, some, something I should probably mention is uh, the uh, console EQ in Logic Pro is an emulation of a Neve 73. Uh, probably also other Neves, but mainly the Neve 73. It gives the kick a really nice color. I won't get too much into the technical stuff here because I'm sure a lot of you guys just don't care. Um, but a lot of a lot of other stuff is obviously EQ is a, is a big thing for me. I'll use SSLs, I'll use... I'll use tape emulators even. Um, but um, uh, yeah, a lot of it is just carving out certain frequencies so that stuff stands out. I did certainly compress, um, but generally only it, it has to depend pretty strongly. I don't tend to compress pretty harshly. As you can see here, it's just tickling the meter. Uh, I, I try to avoid compressing too much unless it's a very specific kind of thing uh, because compression for me, I feel like takes a lot of life out of the song. Um, so yeah, um, that's just some quick technical heebie-jeebies. Um, got some other stuff here. Um, you know, we've got stuff like voice samples I use. Now we come to the payoff. You know, some stuff that I just grabbed, I found like old interviews and splice crap together. Um, there was one of like, I forget who it was, a wrestling guy back from the 80s. And he was drunk as all get out. And he at one point, he just, he just screamed. He was like telling a story and he goes, I said, and I love the way he said that. And so I used it. You can hear it in the track. It's very subtle, but it's in there. I just, I, I love that little, I, I don't know. I heard something in it. And so I went with it. Um, you've got your funk guitar um, loop. This is just something I spliced together from samples. Right, it's just it's just a loop. Uh, you've got your strings, but that's that don't come into later. Pretty much what you hear is what you get. They're literally just Logic Pro strings, and again, as me and my buddies joked around, we called them the Me Channel strings because uh, that's what they sound like, and I and I love it for that reason. And something, something else is that I'm using, you, you guys may notice, but this actually, I put a direct, uh, direction mixer on this, which basically means this is my spread right here. If it's at zero, it's mono. That means there's no stereo information. It is all dead center. So what I'm doing here <clears throat> in the breakdown is I have it dead center at the beginning of, of the breakdown, right? But what you're gonna notice here as I start to spread it out as we build up back into that last chorus. And now we're pretty wide. You hear that? Let's play it again. Right? Pretty cool. Uh, I love using the direction mixer. It's, I, I love being able to use that kind of stuff to, to wide widen something out what does that mean okay this is going to be an important part where if you have headphones wear them uh because this kind of stuff is not going to make any sense if you do not have headphones in um or a, a good monitor system um again like i said basically the idea is it's going from mono to stereo i am i what that what that thing was doing that you saw moving is i automated in for it to spread out as it built up. So it's got w wider and wi wider. Right, so again, listen, make sure you're in your, you've got your headphones in. It's dead center right now, but it's moving out. You hear that? It's subtle, but it's a nice touch. And I, I, that's a trick of mine I've been doing for a while. I really like going from mono to stereo on stuff. Um, so, 
there's that you've got you know i'm pretty much just going through the instruments right now and showing you what exactly all was played so i had an organ you guys probably hear the b3 in there right right so that's that's uh pretty simple it's just a good old b3 uh emulation logic pros b3 man it's actually really good it, it gets the job done uh nothing's like the real deal but it, it does a pretty stinking good job i also have a tape emulation on this and um i have it i've kind of got now if i take off the the tape emulation you hear how i'm having it actually distort it a lot more it's crunchy a lot more crunchy with it on off right on it's more crunchy heavy metal organ yeah it was just that was a patch and i really like the way it sounded um so yeah minor stuff but it adds you know it adds okay it adds and then on top of that pretty much playing everything with the organ was this stupid this is an old plugin of logics it's the es1 it's just a very simple uh subtractive synth so you'll hear that kind of sound in my music quite a bit but that's pretty much it's it gives it a little bit of an old kind of like minneapolis prince 80s flair to it right right so then on top of the organ it's just yeah it's just a little it's got kind of got a minneapolis prince vibe to it you know so and that's that's it what you heard there was the end of the uh the chorus right um oh it's not gonna let me do it again i don't get it why don't right so here's our bass let's break down the bass why don't we there's a lot as you can see here we've kind of got quite a few things in in the bass realm so um i'll go ahead and break this down for you guys let me break it down for you um so there's your simple sub like sine wave sub bass that's just the meat right very simple you're not going to be able to hear this if you are not on headphones. <laughs> very simple. Very th that's all that is. You know, I'm I'm even boosting the bass here. Uh, I've got a little bit of console EQ on it, which gives it a, a, some nice co color. Um, but then on top of that, I've got these gritty, um, like more high end, um, top end. Uh, synth bass sounds right yeah that's all that is and you know uh, it's it, one is panned um actually more right one is like dead center i don't know what i was thinking with that but it sounds good right these are literally just synth samples in um now the, these are audio files but they're original i bounce them down they're originally just uh synth samples from exs24 i'm telling you you can make logic work for anything right and that that whole sound was very much inspired by like no by megan trainer that was very inspired by No by Megan Trainer. Um, and then I've got another. That's out of Omnisphere. It's just a little extra thing. Yeah. So that's I took all. That's very much taken from No by Megan Trainer. Um, 
Let's see, what else do we have? We've got the bass slide sample, very simple stuff. Uh, but you hear it in the track. Very dumb. Uh, and then I've also got, um, that's a, that's actually a patch from the Korg M1, which is actually a pretty old keyboard. It was very popular in the nineties. Um, you can pretty much hear it on anything, um, from the nineties that had anything to do with dance music, pop music, um, even some rock music. Uh, it was used all over like Sonic CD, probably the Sonic Adventure games. Um, and yeah, that's, so that's two different, there's this guy, just a sub bass. And then there's the Korg M1 sample, which is that's just literally a patch in the Korg M1 from my emulator. So, um, yeah. So then I guess if I were to play this with the, uh, with the beat, why not? Oh, I forgot to mention the, uh, oofs. I got to show you guys those. Those are fun. Right. Right, pretty simple stuff. It's also very possible that I'm side chaining some of these. I am, you can see it. Basically what I'm doing is I'm side chaining, uh, using a side chain compression. So whenever the kick hits, these actually go back in volume. Um, you hear how they kind of go back in volume at the front because they're giving room for the kick to, to have its moment. It's very split second moment to just really hit. Um, so yeah, I need to show you guys the oofs. Um, that was something that I stacked like a million times over and it's literally me just going, oh, uh, that's all it is. But you hear it like all throughout the track, right? Oof. That's all it is. Uh, oof. Oof. But I stacked it like, I don't even know how many times. How many times is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 times. But it yeah, it adds some meat, you know? Cuz if I play it with the with if I play it with the uh It's just, it's just a nice touch. It's just a nice touch, okay? So, um yeah. Uh and then of course you have the piano. Um in terms of mixing, uh, in order to get this thing to really pop out in the mix, I, as you guys can see here, turned up the living crap out of the top end. So here is, there's there's two things I use. I use the, actually, no, I didn't use it. Oh, wow. I'm actually surprised with myself. So I didn't use it. I often use this thing called uh, Air EQ, which adds like some crisp top end you can't even get out of a normal EQ. It's very interesting. How much space does all of Logic and the accessories take? So many instruments and small size from Logic, Omnisphere, for example, feel like I would need another computer just for this. You know, that's a good question. I don't know exactly how much space Logic itself is taking up, uh, including all of its instruments. They do a very good job of leaving uh, quite a bit of room uh, or optimizing it pretty well. Uh, if you go to the App Store, uh, Logic, uh, it'll tell you just how much space is required. Um, the, the loops, uh, that you'll find um, and the instruments definitely are what take up all the space. The program itself does not take up a lot of space actually. Um, so here's another interesting thing. This is something that I don't think most people would uh, ever think is okay to do, but screw that. So I'm using a pedal board on my piano. Um, why the frick am I using a pedal board on my piano? Because um, I actually, there is a thing called the spin box, which essentially is emulating a Leslie speaker, which is a speaker. You hear them that it's what gives B3 organs, the organs you hear like in gospel music, or I don't freaking know a lot of different stuff. Not the big church organs. You know what I mean? 
um, it gives them kind of the 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 um, sound that they have, which is essentially they have the speaker, and if they press, I think a pedal or maybe it's a switch, uh, they can speed or slow down the speaker. Basically, it's a horn that lets out the sound and the horn spins around. So you get this really interesting kind of vibrato sound because it's going like, uh, 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 right? Um, and it can go faster or it can go slower. And it gives a different sound depending on how you, how you go about it. Um, so it's a really cool uh, effect. Um, a good example of using it actually on like vocals um, is uh, Tomorrow Never Knows uh, by um, the Beatles. Great track, super cool track. Um, and they use that same Leslie speaker effect on John Lennon's voice. Uh, it's been used a million times over since then, but that's kind of one of the initial ways that it was done. Um, but that was kind of one of the first times it was done. Uh, so anyway, all that to say, I actually used a pedal board. Uh, the pedal board has a very specific emulation of it uh, that would be, is more like an emulation of what would be used as a pedal f effect for a guitar. And I like its sound more than an actual emulation of a Leslie. So you'll hear a little vibrato in it. You hear that little vibrato? That's this guy. Let me turn it off turn it off right see it's it's I, I think it's cool so that's saying in the final thing obviously it's a little bit further down in the mix there at some point I believe I drop it Well, maybe I don't. I actually don't know. But as you can hear, the, it's also incredibly bright. Like this piano is very bright. It was so that I could cut, so that you could hear it in the mix. It was a way, it, I needed it to cut through the mix. So this is without the EQ, check this out. That just sounds like it's under a blanket. brightened up that sucker so yeah this is uh for the record this is keyscape that i'm using uh for the piano fantastic plugin great plugin i would most certainly uh check it out um obviously i've got my toy piano which you hear in the track also keyscape and oh and yeah there's a little bit of a slowdown in there Uh, Youngtown work with Nate wants to bet. Uh, is this recent? Yeah, so you got Right, it's just a simple uh, toy piano sample uh, from Keyscape, but it's very nice. It's a lot of fun I love that was something I heard pretty much from the beginning and then of course you have your leads, your lead synth thing. So let me break this down. This is a few different sounds. So here's one. This is just as simple. This is the retro synth in Logic Pro 10. Very, very uh, simple. Here, let me play it word. It's, it's pretty stupid, you know? It's pretty dumb sounding. Uh, but then you stack it. So I've got my clav lead, which is kind of a guitarish sounding, it's got a wah effect on it, also from Keyscape. This guy. Right. You know? Um, yeah. So, um, uh, clav lead, and then I've got like this dirty lead thing. Weird, weird. It's Omnisphere. So l let's open up Omnisphere here. Um, come on, come on. Thank you. So simple, 
square synth and then I'm like, I guess I'm just throwing a lot of effects on it, I guess. Tape slammer proverb. Is there I've got I guess I I, I did some um bit crushing on it, and that's how you get this weird sound. Three years ago, I think it was oh. Oh yeah, I think I heard about that. Simple stuff. Um And we also stacked it with guitars, but I ended up deciding not to have the guitars. I, I just didn't like them. Yeah, I just didn't like them. They didn't they didn't work right with with the rest of it, so I, I dropped them. However, to add on to this, Jordan played horns on top of this. Let's get to the brass, why don't we? Uh, so here's his vocals. <laughs> but where is the brass? <laughs> uh, literally can't find the brass. Oh, here they are, horns mix. I, I thought I named them under. Okay, so, brass. <laughs> Simple. They're kind of small sounding horns, but they really work for this track. Jordan did a fantastic job. Right, so he's he's playing horns, he's playing some lower horns, I guess. He's playing like trumpets, and he might play he I think he also does trombone. And then he does um, some sax. And then he actually manipulates it because he can't play um, more the lower instruments um, in terms of brass. So he actually pitched down some of them to get the effect. But it works. It works. You know? Right? So pretty simple stuff. And then there's also his backing vocals now initially i was not a fan because he has this thing he just loves to do it because he loves the 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 sound that it gives it it's less of because it's a crutch and more because he likes the sound of it but he heavily auto-tunes his stuff um heavily heavily auto-tunes it uh and i remember asking him for not auto-tuned and he sent them to me but i ended up deciding after listening to it, i was like i really actually kind of like the effect he did with with his auto-tuned vocal backing vocals All right, come on, play back. Why are they not playing back? Come on. Uh, why can't I hear it? I don't understand why I can't hear it. Is there nothing there? Oh, no. Oh, no. -y. Oh, no. -y. Am I missing the vocals? Oh, no. -y. Oh, no. -y. I've got to go find those. Well, yikes, thank God the song's out, right? Oh, no, we, oh, we're missing the vocal. We're missing good old Jordan's vocals. Oh, no. Oh, that's sad. All right, well, I thank God the thing's out. Um, yikes, gonna have to figure that out. Um, but that's a big yikes. Um, Do you have another file? Yeah, I'm sure they probably got moved somewhere. Um, when was this song released? One week ago. <laughs> One week ago in two days. So nine days ago. Um, yeah. Um, uh, anyway, okay. Well, that's sad. Um, very sorry about that. I guess we won't be showing the, the, the Jordan's vocals right now. Um, so there's also Chase Aker's guitar work. Um, I'll just go ahead and he did quite a bit of stuff. All this stuff over here is all chase. So there's obviously the opening. Everybody can hear that. That's pretty obvious. Um, however, actually there's one interesting thing I want to, I want to talk about. Um, this whole thing is actually, um, 
Let me go ahead. So there's obviously different stacks here. Thanks for the host, Diego. Appreciate it. Um, right, so that's that's one. And I'm actually using the amp emulator for all of this. We're just plugging DI right in and using Logic's amp. Works pretty well. Um, so that's a different pickup that we're using there. So two different pickups. Um, and then we have right another pickup so here's when things get interesting you guys may have noticed hey it sounds slightly muffled or um, it's just not there's something missing, right? Well, what I did um, is I actually literally mic'd up him just playing the part, not connected. I, I put the mic right up to him playing the strings. And I ended up stacking that on top of the other guitars because I wanted to get that sound, that, that high-end strumming sound out of it. So what you're hearing is all of it together. So you're actually literally hearing the string being strung, strummed. Simple as that. So then there's also, he played guitar on top of the bass line, which gives it more beef. There's a little bit of that Leslie effect on it too. Right? Oh yeah, and he's also playing that thing. Right? Cool. So... But at some point he's also got like a little bit of a... Yeah, right here. Just to, to like get some funk in there. Cool crap, really cool. So that's the guitars. Um, we use different pickups for the different takes. If anybody has any questions, let me know. Uh, Cause I know I'm kind of flying through this um, to an extent. Um, but yeah, basically I think, I think it was two different, it's, it, it was four stacks, L and R. And I think, I believe it's two stacks, same pickup and then two stacks, different pickup on the guitar. And, um, yeah. That's how we got that sound. It may have also been a slight change in the amp. <laughs> What's a guitar? Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. So that's all of that. Uh, I'm wondering if, oh shoot. What did I, what did I not unsolo? Oh, there we go. Um, so then there's like the crap ton of vocals. Uh, I'm sure there's stuff I'm missing. Uh, for instance, okay, um, I have a sound of like the city. Very subtle, but it's in there. And basically it is noise gated so that it only turns on when the kick hits. It is side chained to the drums, to the beat, or to the kick. So that it only hits when the kick hits. Where's that kick? You hear that? This is it's just some added interesting noise, I suppose. Um, obviously, you got your police siren sample that you hear in there, which I don't know how I decided the car honking thing shouldn't be in here, but I let this pass, but whatever. Maybe it was subtle enough. I mean, it's pretty subtle, but yeah, there's that. Uh, there's the race car drive-by, which you hear quite a bit in the fills. You guys have probably heard this before. It's used in, like, every iMovie thing ever. Uh, serious question, though. How long does the, did this take to make? Um, well, 
it's very tough to answer that question because I was going back and forth with it. You know, I had other work, I had other stuff to do, but I would come back to it. Uh, but if you're asking literally from the moment I started it to finishing it, despite the times in which I was obviously not waking up and working on this, um, I started this song in November of 2017 and just got it out a week ago. So over two years. Um, uh, after doing Settle and Smash, that's not quite correct. That answer, you, you are correct, but that's a different kind of answer. The, the, the after doing Settle and Smash thing is based on, um, what that is based on is when did I start working on Project 97? When did I start working on this album as a whole? Pretty much right out of Settle and Smash. Um, but this song, um, which is actually, I consider this song the turning point of when I really realized and knew what I wanted the album to sound like was this song. Um, this song came to fruition November of 2017. Um, and then took two years to get out. So yeah, here we go. So this is, this is uh, that. Um, you've also got literally... Some weird <laughs> system overload. How many times have I seen that? Just interesting samples going on. Glass breaking loop. Right. That's pretty Michael Jacksony, right? That's that's pretty freaking Michael Jacksony. Um, you've got so here is the uh, the. So what that is is actually Scarby Funk Guitar, which is a uh, a library for uh, Native Instruments. Um, uh, what is it? Contact. Um, that's what that is, and then it's also got a little bit of a bit crusher on it. So I programmed that in. Uh, can we get a vague idea of when some more songs are coming? Uh, spring spring early spring uh maybe maybe even maybe even like february um depending uh we'll see we'll see um yeah so you've got all this stuff you've got your brass and everything okay let's get to let's get to the vocals so i've got a lot of random ad libs here five years ain't gonna break me baby Right, a lot of just random crap. Three, what? One, two, three. Why can't you just? Right, just some of it is to add on to give more grit to like, like for instance, I liked Emma's Why Can't You Just Compromise, but I wanted to add a little bit something on top, right? One, two, three. Why can't you just compromise? Ha. Why you gotta be so stubborn? You make this harder than it needs to be. Um, yeah, and you can hear that little delay in there. I automated that in, right? So I'm actually putting in a delay, kind of a fuzzy delay here and there. This is literally the automation for the volume. So there, you know, I, I work with the compressor and the, the EQ quite a bit, but it's still not quite enough. I ride the faders, not really, I automate it. I use the, the mouse to ride it in most of the time, but I do that, um, to still get a lot of certain certain words still aren't quite clear enough right so you'll see like i spike the volume for like a syllable I throw him in the gutter, the way you right act. the the way you act not quite clear enough so i bumped it way up so you can hear it all right peace out silent dagger um why can't you just compromise ha. why you gotta be so stubborn you and you can also probably hear uh what we call harmonic distortion uh on emma this is actually also pretty inspired by the mix and effects on like megan trainer stuff so something that megan trainer does quite a bit um is um she'll have some pretty heavy harmonic distortion on her stuff and it gives just like an extra little bit of color to the vo to the vocal um, so basically I've got a tube EQ. Now this is very unconventional for me. I very actually rarely use tube EQs. I very rarely use, this is an emulation. This is Logic's emulation, but I'm using a tube EQ on Emma. And then I've got an SSL on top of that. 
uh, which I also uh, I do this more often than the 2BQ, but I've got this SSL on, or I'm doing some work here. It's just compromise. And it should also be noted this is actually two stacks. So Emma is singing this this take twice. So here's take one. Compromise. Why you gotta be so stubborn? You make this harder than it needs to be. Right, and then there's take two. Come on. Why can't you just compromise? And you can also probably notice if you've got headphones on that I'm ever so slightly panning them a little bit to left and right to give them a little bit more stereo depth. Compromise. Why you gotta be so stubborn? You make this harder than it needs to be. Right, so two stacks. Recorded her singing that line twice. Why can't you just compromise? Was it actually intentional that Emma sounds quite louder than you throughout the so song? <laughs> uh, no. Uh, at the beginning, yes. It was very, very intentional for me to um, make her, uh, in terms of dynamic, I'm more whispery and she's a lot louder. So actually, um, it depends on what you're asking. If you mean in terms of literal technical volume, I'm trying to make sure we're both pretty much clear and upfront in the mix. That said... Um, it was very intentional for me to only have moments where I get very gritty. Um, but a lot of the song, I'm actually whispering, right? Or not wh whispering is the wrong word, but I call it my whisper vocal, uh, which is, it's, um, it's something I started doing because I wanted a little bit more dynamic where I would sing a little bit more breathy, um, in verses. Um, and even in this case, in the chorus, Whereas Emma is pretty open and and all chest, pretty harsh, pretty Janet Jacksony, pretty much the whole song. Um, Why well, you gotta be? So yes, in that case, yes, it was very intentional that she was louder. Um, Why can't you just compromise? Right. Okay. So I've got these SSLs on her. I recorded her kind of a little too loud, so I ended up actually putting a limiter on her as well. Why well, you gotta be so? To to keep her from actually clipping. Oops. Um, and then I've got, this is a great thing that Slate's got, which is the virtual mix board or mix rack, whatever the frick. Very nice. I'm, I've got a, uh, distressor on her or their emulation of it. Distressors are great. They color vocals. Fantastic. Youngtown himself would vouch for this thing for days, man. He loves the distressor. Um, he also loves pretty much everything in, um, the mix rack i'm also putting this is this thing works magic right here this thing called the air eq it literally adds some top end crisp that trying to turn that up with a simple eq is not gonna do it literally adds some wisp of air that wasn't there before very very nice in fact i may as well try and show you what it sounds like without it on it's it's kind of subtle but i feel like it adds a lot okay so here's without air eq on it's compromise. Why you now, I've already turned up quite a bit of like bright end with like the EQ and stuff. It's compromise. Let me. Why you gotta be so? No EQ now. It's compromise. No EQ. Why on. you gotta be so stubborn? You make this harder. Okay, than... that's some EQ. Now let me turn on the air EQ. It's compromise. Why you gotta be so now, stubborn? You make. You kind of have to have an ear for it, but. There's a little bit of top end that helps it cut through the mix. It's compromise. Why you will there be an instrumental? There will not be an instrumental. I'm sorry. Um, you gotta be so stubborn. You make this harder than it needs to be. So okay. So then what this guy right here is doing is it's at, he's at adding in all of that harmonic distortion. This is a preamp emulation. It's compromise. Why you gotta be See, so stubborn? most of it's pretty much gone make now. This than it, needs to be. it just adds like a top end crunch that really makes her vocal sound pretty cool. It's got, it's got, uh, it's got. It's compromise. Why you gotta be so stubborn? You make this harder than it needs to be. Why you gotta anyway, so there's that. Um. Okay, what is going on? 
get me out of this thank you so there's that is emma's verse vocal right there and it's also kind of her lead vocal throughout you know you'll hear reason for division something grudges now been on you just wanna cause a problem and you're tearing this apart oh that's right i've got an added on grit vocal this is i think this is this is like i don't even know what this is but i and you're tearing this apart lots of distortion it's just literally just i threw a pedal board on it fuzz just one distortion and you're tearing this apart it's just it's cool it sounds it sounds all right peace out pro six feet i don't know how to say your name have a good night man um, this apart. yeah so there's all that let me go ahead and show off <laughs> let me show off my opening verse here when i was young i thought the adults were kids grown up now this is uh some people may not notice this Th listen now when i was young i thought the adults were kids grown up pro r6 finca <laughs> all right peace out um yeah so if you you may or may not have noticed when i was young i thought the dogs i've seen a bit ace when i was young i thought the dogs were kids grown up you know by the way i have a mini sub goal up and it does not need to be up i don't know why that's there that just needs to be gone um was young, I thought the adults were kids grown up. Right, okay, now let me play this back again. Notice if you notice anything. When I was young, I thought the adults were kids grown up. Oh, alright, my bad, Ace. So you hear, do you, you guys notice anything? So was... what's going on here is this, my main take is a little, it's obviously got some effects on it. It's a little bit radio-ified and it's, it sounds kind of like a radio. When I was young, I thought the adults were kids grown up. Right? But I've got kind of a bright end. What is that? And it's a little bit wider too. It's a little bit more spread out. When I was young, I thought the adults were kids grown up. So what that is, is I am doing two takes where I'm literally just whispering the lyrics. And then taking out all the bottom end, so all you hear is that top high whispery sound. So that that's two. It might even be yeah. It's two LR stacks. So left and right stacks, and then the main take. When I was young, I thought the adults were kids grown up. And that's how that's how we got that effect. And that really tends to change the way people behave. It's their own grave that they dig. Right? Making bad decisions. And I use it even here. I use it even here. Making bad decisions, but he listen to no one. He says that guy was the problem. I use manipulation. Right? It's interesting. Uh, again, it's used in the chorus. Your concept of fear is driving me insane. You want good vibes while you sit there and complain. Right? Um, I am actually, I'm pretty sure with the whispers, I, okay, so for one, air EQ way up on this guy. Let's see what it sounds like without it on. Your concept of fear is driving me insane. You hear how suddenly there you is literally, as, as it's called, there's like air in there. Your concept Not, of fear so here here it is off. Your concept of fear was driving me insane. You want good vibes while you sit there and complain. On. Um yeah, there it's quite a bit more obvious. Um so yeah, that's that's the the whispers, and I'm pretty sure if we go into here, yeah, I've got quite a few things on the chain, but as you can see, this is the distressor. It's pretty strong, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure this is one of those instances where I really compressed it uh, because I really wanted to grab mainly the consonants of what I'm s saying. Yeah, you can hear it working. You see that? You can, or you can see it working, I mean, literally. So here's without that compressor on. Your concept of fear is driving me insane. You want good vibes while you sit there and complain. Right? Here's with it on. 
You want good vibes while you sit there and complain. Right? It changes. It's got more oomph to it now. Same deal here. Same. Your concept of fear is driving me insane. Right? Okay, so then that with the main thing. Your concept of fear is driving me insane. And without the whispers, just so that you get an idea of what it's doing for the vocal. Your concept of fear is driving me insane. You want good vibes while you sit there and complain. Right. And again, I'm doing two stacks of all of this. So I've got my, I've got one, one take, right? A little bit to the left. See, I'm moving just ever so slightly pan to the left. Your concept of fear is driving me insane. Right. And then take two on the other side, a little bit to the right. Play. Your concept of fear is driving me insane. And then together. You get like a bit more of an interesting idea, uh, effect, right? When, when you stack it. Your concept of fear is driving me insane. It's got a little bit more power to it, I feel like. Sometimes you don't want stacks, but with this track, I felt like it was pretty necessary. So pretty much everything is stacked like that. And then again, with the whispers on top. Your concept of fear is driving me insane. Adds a stereo depth and a little bit more breathy, airy kind of sound to it. It's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, there's that. And then there's the stinking like backing vocals, right? There's the um, lead. Vo okay, so here's something interesting. What I did to get a little bit of a, an interesting room sound for this. What was the inspiration for the song? I'll get to that. Hubba Bubba. I actually talked about that at the beginning of this whole stream, but I'll get back to that. Um, um, here's an interesting thing. Um, what I did to get a, a unique kind of uh, reverb out of this. Now, I am using like some, uh, like, let's see, what's this? Reason for division, assault and grudges. Yeah, I'm definitely using some different kinds of uh, uh, like sends. For different effects here. Um Reason. Reason for division. Assault and grudges now when on. You just wanna cause a problem and you're tearing this apart. Okay, so I haven't soloed the other thing. So listen to this. This is pretty much my reverb uh that I created. I literally created myself um for the vocals. Right? So what is that? I, I think I used it on myself as well. I did. Um, this is... Making bad decisions, but listen to no one. He says that that was the problem. Right? So that's my custom reverb that I, I, I gave to kind of bring a little bit more width and ambience, I suppose, to the vocal. So it doesn't sound... So what is that? And what did I do? So that is literally my room reverb. Um, and by that, what I mean is I took the mic, I placed it in one corner of the room toward the speakers. I isolated the vocals and just played it back and recorded what came out of those speakers, right? And then I moved the, the mic to the opposite side of the room. That, that side of the room, let's say is the left. So that, that take is pan hard left, the other take is pan hard right. Same thing, played back on the speaker uh, and recorded what came through the speakers and I had the sound of the, the entire room. That's the reverb. So the reverb is literally me recording the vocals isolated, played back. Um, and that's how we got this sound. Um, Cause I didn't want like a big reverb or anything. I wanted something that sounded like it was in the room. Um, and so that's what I did. Uh, and it's pretty, it's, it's pretty heavy at the end. Um, at the end of the song. Right. So that's the, that's the reverb. So let me go ahead and play back now the, the, the BGV, um, the, the actual background vocal that Emma did, right? Come on. Long, long, long. Long, long, long. Long, long. Yeah. 
So pretty simple stuff. You know, if you want me to break down all the harmonies, it's how, how I do it to give it a bit more, uh, um, uh, to kind of give it more meat, make it sound larger, uh, is I'll do four takes of the same exact uh, part, uh, too close to the mic, pan hard left, hard, hard right, and then I'll have her step away from the mic. So I'll have her record, uh, th like, listen. Oh, hold on, I gotta turn off the, the reverb. Right? Da, 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 da. Right? So she'll be up here. And then the next two, the next two. Long, long, long. You hear that? These are the other two, and I'm having her step away from the mic a little bit. So there's a little bit more sound of the room in there. Long, long, long. So it gives it a little bit more meat. Uh, it just makes it a little bit larger. Um, long, long, long. And <laughs> CPU is freaking out now. Um, and then part, the next part, same method. Long, long, long. Right. I think this is only a three-part harmony, actually. Long, long, long. Long, long. I'm at that bit sounds like a group from Broadway. Well. Emma is, uh, she's kind of a professional Broadway singer. She's kind of borderline professional Broadway singer. So I have to sometimes make sure that her Broadway doesn't show up in her vocal when she sings pop. Because sometimes it does. Long, long, long. And that's the third part. Long, long, long. Right? Pretty simple stuff. There actually is also, we should probably point this one out, right? That one's pretty cool, right? I think it's literally got. Right here, let me, I'll, I'll literally do this so that we can just. Again, four takes of everything. Four stacks. Right. And then and then as I called it, opera. This is her this is a take that she did just simply. And you'll probably see these little lines here. What these lines mean is that I'm taking separate takes from different, basically what it is, it was we record numerous takes and I'll take the best from each take and bam. And uh, I may need to add here, um, you may notice there is um, no auto tune on any of this. No pitch correction, no melodyne, no nothing. There is no pitch correction of any sort, no auto-tune. Um, Emma is just really good. Um, I avoid auto-tune most of the time myself, but I do sometimes use what's called flex pitch, which I would prefer over auto-tune because auto-tune kind of just tries to correct all of it, and I don't want that. I kind of want some of those slight offness you know like it's not ever it's not right on um and i like that um but i'm not as good a singer as she is so i can still be ever so slightly pitchy sometimes to the point where it's kind of tough for me to to be able to get the the right take so i will use what's called flex pitch which means i just i just uh will correct certain pitches uh in an overall take i won't fix everything i won't try to fix everything automatically um but even then, when I use flex pitch, most of the time I don't actually put it to the perfect, like right on the line. I try to keep it just around because I don't like things perfect. Um, and uh, because when things are perfect, um, it's not human anymore. It, it, it loses its human element. And that's my biggest issue with auto tune. Um, I think there are great ways to use auto tune. 
um i think you can actually use it um very lightly uh and it can just help kind of be a tool to just slightly improve a take but at the end of the day i think a little bit of offness in the in the tuning actually helps um it, it gives it that human element all right peace out sushi right no no tuning on any of that it's just a matter of getting really good pitch you just practice 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 can you download these sites none of them are sites i don't know what you mean by sites logic is not a internet based at all flex pitch is something that is built into logic um it's literally right here it's part of logic omnisphere is what is called a plugin it is something that you download, I suppose, from the internet, uh, but then you install it into um, Logic. Um, but yeah, none of it is uh, internet-based um, in itself, in and of itself. Anyway, so I've played that back a million times. There's that. Stop. Hear that sound? <laughs> yeah, that's like an extra little part. So if I were to play back like all of the freaking vocals, including the scratch, because again, like I said earlier, I actually ended up using some of the scratch vocal. Um... Hear that sound! That sound! Oh. Why can't you just... Won't let me play it. Let's get along. Woo! Baby! Goodness, Emma. We actually had to work quite a bit to figure out what the run needed to be. We sat there for probably like 30 minutes just trying to figure out what exact, how should the run go? And then she just killed it. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much the vocals. Um, is there anything else that I was going to uh, kind of touch on in terms of vocals so i feel like there was probably something but i i don't know oh the arguing uh the the fighting part so there's numerous takes you guys already heard jordan's unfortunately for whatever reason the vocals are missing which is not good um but uh basically oh shoot okay i i make mistakes um where is it what uh oh oh it's oh it's saying it's saying which ones are being soloed there we go, there we go, there we go. Okay, so for the fighting, that's no like stock sound effect. We recorded all of those and they're literally just ad libs that uh, I just stacked a whole bunch of different ones, right? So you'll hear here. I don't understand how this is a problem. Why, why would you do that? I don't I'm just literally that. improvising. It's not okay. That's, I don't care. That's not okay. I don't care. <laughs> That's not okay. Right. So then, and then I just stack another one on top of it. Just a whole bunch of random improvising. I will report. It's not okay. I, you are report. No. That's. It's not I don't even, care. That's not okay. I don't care. Nope. You are. That's not reporting. okay. You. I don't even know what I'm saying. It's just a matter of a whole bunch of blabber. Okay. I, you what are report. No. That's. I don't care. That's not okay. You don't care. Nope. It's not. That's not. Those are my little Kermit voice in there. Right. Okay. So that's four people arguing right there. Now let's now let's check out let's check out Emma over here. Are you kidding? Oh my god! Are you serious? Now it's pretty it's pretty quiet in the mix. Um. Oh my god! Are you serious right now? Are you kidding me? No, stop getting all up in my. It's a, like a Boston sound. You guys are gonna have to really turn up your your uh, your. Your tone's ridiculous. No, I can't even deal with you right now. Like I. And we also did a little bit of pitch shifting to make her voice sound different. Oh, I'm so frustrated with you. It's like unbelievable. No, no. 
And then there was one, I think this is the one where she kept screaming Becky, and I was sitting there dying laughing. I think this is the one. Becky? Becky, listen to what he did the other day. No, Becky, listen. Becky. Becky! No, you don't understand Becky! Becky, no! No! Like, I literally even, because nobody can hear it, you can hear her break in there. You can hear her start to, because we just Becky, kept no. laughing so hard. Becky, no! You don't understand Becky! Becky, no! No! <laughs> and that's in the final mix! That's in the final mix. Oh yeah, po it's poppycock. You know what? I need to go to the loo. Oh, oh, oh! I'm devastated. Oh, this can't be happening. Yeah. So, and again, we pitched down it, so she sounds kind of like a different person. And then there's this. Sacre bleu. So added. So then all of those together. Right, and then you've also got my ad libs on top of that. And unfortunately, again, I don't know what happened to the freaking files, but we're missing Jordan's. Otherwise, I would stack his on top so you could get the final thing. But between Emma and I, right? Okay, so that's how that came to be. Just literally just. Stacks on stacks on stacks, trying to change up our voice a little bit. It's ultimately just three people, but it sounds like it's, you know, 15 or so. Um, what's up, Melanade? Also, hi, Neon Nice Knight. Um, um, yeah, if you really listen, you can hear the Becky thing. Let me go ahead and go back to the final, uh, the final thing. Agree for it. Here it is. <laughs> Anyway, so that's the breakdown. Um, I, I think that's pretty much it. You know, I could get into all the crazy mix stuff, but I, I don't think it's worth it. Um, we're already like two hours in, but if anybody has any questions about about um, the about it ab ab about um, what I just showed you guys, the whole breakdown and and, and anything, um, I'd be happy to uh, answer you guys. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. That's um. That is get along. Um, quite a monster. But hopefully after watching this, you have a better understanding of why there's 320 plus tracks.